Okay, good morning. My name is Tiana DuPont with WSU Extension. We wanted to talk to you a little bit today about giving you an introduction to X disease and little cherry disease and why they're so important to be managing in our orchards right now. So as you probably know, both X disease and little cherry disease cause small, light-colored, unmarketable fruit in cherries. Those fruit could be pointed and misshapen or have sort of a buckskin light color over top of a darker background in some cases. In stone fruit, we get slightly different symptoms with X disease. We see no symptoms with little cherry virus. So we'll get yellowing of the leaves and lesions on those leaves that then fall out and cause sort of a shot hole like appearance. What's a little confusing is we have two diseases caused by two pathogens, but they cause very similar symptoms, which we conventionally call little cherry. We have little cherry virus two, which is a virus. It's gonna be hosted by both sweet and sour cherries and other stone fruit, but only show symptoms in cherries. It's moved around by grafting as well as insect vectors, and the insect vector for little cherry virus is mealybugs, both apple and grape mealybug. X disease is caused by X disease phytoplasma. Phytoplasma are like a bacteria, but without a rigid cell wall. It's hosted not only by prunus, but also by some broadleaf weeds and ornamentals. It causes disease on all types of prunus, so not only cherries, but peaches, plums, and nectarines. It's moved by not only grafting, but by insect vectors. In this case, the vector is certain types of leaf hoppers. So in particular in Washington, we see Geminatus and Reductus, as well as in smaller quantities for other types of leaf hoppers. So we're really worried about these pathogens because we're seeing them th spread throughout our growing region at really high levels and in epidemic levels in the case of X disease. This map is showing incidence of positive samples of X disease phytoplasma that have come into the diagnostic lab. And you can see those red dots throughout the state all the way from the Dalles in, Wash in, excuse me, in Oregon up to OMAC in Ogunagan County, with a really high concentration in Yakima, with over a thousand positive samples, and throughout that Tri Cities and um, area, up into Moses Lake and Benton. We're really worried about X disease because those numbers have been increasing at a dramatic rate over the last couple of years. So back in 2017, we saw a pretty small number of positive samples, about 10% of samples and really only a few hundred. By 2019, that was up to 44% of samples with thousands of positive samples, more than 2,600 throughout the state. We have less data in 2020, um, but we were around 36% positive in those samples. So we haven't yet really started to flatten out that curve, and we're still at an epidemic level with X disease throughout the state. We wanted to get a better idea of the impacts of both X and little cherry disease throughout the state. So we've been surveying growers, consultants, and orchard managers. We have about 63 respondents so far, representing 13,500 acres, or about 23% of our cherry acreage in Washington and Oregon. So far, they've told us about 145,000 cherry trees equaling 685 acres that have been removed due to X disease and little cherry virus, as well as 140 acres of stone fruit. We know from previous work that it costs growers a lot of money when they have to replant their orchards, about $118,000 an acre in both lost revenue and the cost to reestablish that orchard. So if we multiply that by that 685 acres, that means that we've lost about six, excuse me, about $81 million in revenue over that seven year reestablishment period. 
If we look at 2020, our price per box on average was $52.80 for just domestic red cherries. Again, if we multiply that by that 685 acres, that's over $18 million in lost revenue in just 2020. So it's important for you guys to hear not only from us, the researchers, but also from growers. So I wanted to um, let some of them speak for us. We had to do that recorded this year. So I'm gonna hand this over to a couple of our grower case studies. So this block behind me is a being on Mazur block. It's 28 acres. We first started finding X disease back in 2016 with only about 10 trees out of the block. Uh, 2017 wasn't documented, but 2018, there were about 74 trees that we noticed. And then in 2019, about 51. And then this last year, about 46. Our removal program is, uh, we wash the trees through harvest, tag them, uh, send them into the lab, get tested. Uh, once they come back positive, we uh, remove the trees uh, with hit them with Roundup first to make sure there's no uh, root grafting. And then the trees are removed shortly after. And I, you know, the decrease in the last couple of years of positive trees, I think is due to the fact that we've increased our aggressiveness with our post-harvest leaf hopper applications and rapid removal of the tree. Block is a block of sweethearts. We started scouting it in 2016. In 2016, we found a couple trees that looked symptomatic. We tested them, they were positive for a little cherry virus too. So the following year, we scouted again, and again found a handful of trees and removed those symptomatic trees. In 2018, there was um, quite a few more symptomatic trees. It ended up being Western X when we tested it. We removed those trees and we've been scouting ever since. So this last year we scouted, we only found five symptomatic trees, three of them positive for little cherry and one of them positive for Western X. So this block is an example. If you have low levels of infection and scout every year and remove your trees, you're able to keep the block in production without losing a lot of trees and not having to remove your whole block. I think it's critically important that we pay attention to little cherry disease. It's the most serious threat that we've had in our industry since I've been in the industry for 44 years. And there's been nothing like this threat. This has a threat of taking us out of business. It spreads rapidly. And I think that uh, all growers need to pay attention. Little, small, big, uh, growers, everybody needs to pay attention to this because it does have the capacity to not just take you out, but to take an industry out. So with that, we're going to go into some of the management for these pathogens. It's really important, though, to remember, remove those infected trees. This is the source of the pathogen in the orchard. We have to get them out if we want to get this epidemic under control. Make sure to to look at some of our resources at treefruit.wcu.edu. And thank you to our videographers, Ricardo Naranjo, as well as Jeff Laren and Cody Bounds from WSU Extension and GS Long, and um, my co-author, Cody Molnar, and to funding from the Tree Fruit Research Commission and the WSU Tree Fruit Endowment.